APUs are the future. And when I say a statement like that, I always get the feeling, even to this day, that there are many people that think I'm saying the future is esports games with weak graphics. But in fact, I'm saying the other side of what that implication would be, an APU future. I'm saying soon, many people need to calibrate what they think we can get out of an APU, what the future of portable performance will be. And we're already seeing the conventions of what you can expect in a portable laptop challenge by Renoir. And although my last video was predominantly about analyzing Intel's Tiger Lake, how quickly they can get it to market with what performance and when they can actually get those six core and higher models to consumers, I could not escape spending a large portion of the video comparing AMD's 4900HS to what Intel has now and should have this fall because there's no way around it. Renoir has overperformed expectations, especially Intel's, bringing true desktop class performance to thin and light gaming notebooks. And notebooks that, when pared down, shouldn't need to be that expensive given the small die size and other cuts AMD made to Renoir. But as fun as it is to argue over percentage points, I feel like a lot of people are missing the greater narrative going on right now. And it's at least become abundantly clear to me. I mean, look, Tiger Lake will be out this year. It will clock probably at least 10% faster than Ice Lake, giving it, you know, let's call it almost 14 nanometer clock speeds, and it will have higher IPC. New leaks have come out showing the projections for around a 7% IPC increase and double the graphics performance of Ice Lake are probably going to hold true. And that should be enough to compete roughly with Renoir, even with half the cores. Not certainly in all tasks, and I do think it'll be lacking in the most modern AAA games because they just need more cores. But, well, Intel is bringing out higher core count models. Intel's 8-core that has slightly better graphics performance than Renoir should also be about a 35 to 45-watt APU. And, and then this is when everyone jumps in and says, so what, AMD got theirs out first. And that's absolutely true. But I want you to really let that sink in where the mobile market will be in early to mid-2021. Just a few years ago, we were talking about how it was blowing our mind that Intel was rolling out a quad core at 15 watts with hyper threading in laptops and that quad core was still commendable for running with like a base clock of 1.6 gigahertz or something and meanwhile AMD had powerful APU graphics performance but its CPU still couldn't really keep up with Intel and its idle power usage was well it left a lot to be desired even up until recently, it just feels like we've always had to pay extra for better IPC and yet still sacrifice graphics performance or get something with graphics performance that can run almost all AAA games but is still kind of hamstrung by the quad core controlling it. And that's just not where we're going to be soon. We're going to have... 8-core versus 8-core, two APUs that can do it all and do it all like a desktop most of the time. Renoir's graphics are at a base PS4's level, and Tiger Lakes should be a bit stronger than that, actually. And with that level of performance, at least I believe, for the next 18 months, devs will make sure most games are able to barely run on last gen consoles but if they can barely run on a last gen ps4 in probably 900p or something maybe even 720p by the end of the generation that means in your laptop with a cpu worlds stronger than what's in a ps4 or xbox one you should be able to not just struggle to run the AAA game but at least run it in 900p low settings at locked 60 and that is a substantial quality of life difference it's good enough you can play AAA games now even in laptops that are fairly cheap and I do have to emphasize that Renoir is cheap. At this point, though a 7 nanometer wafer is of course more expensive than a 12 nanometer wafer, for when 12 nanometer cards and processors came out, I don't think 7 nanometer right now is even twice as expensive as what they were selling 
those wafers for. I'm pretty sure Renoir with its, what is it, uh, 30% smaller die size, actually more like 40% smaller die size, should be saleable for about the same cost as what those Zen 1 and Zen Plus APUs were. And why would AMD then not beef up Renoir? Well, it's a pretty obvious strategy if you ask me. Just look at the finally public die shots of Renoir, where the graphics portion of the APU takes up far, far less room than what was in Picasso. It's pretty clear to me when you look at the 4900 HS reviews that AMD wants to pair Renoir with out wasting that much die space on its integrated graphics with dedicated cards, right? It has eight cores and even cut down will have six cores. Renoir is meant to be paired with dedicated cards. That's why so little of its die space was wasted on graphics. It's just a happy accident that AMD did such a good job that it blows Intel's 10 nanometer gaming APUs out of the water to the point that Tiger Lake will struggle to be that much stronger than AMD's budget option. And the non-budget options are coming. The first one I believe AMD will bring out is Van Gogh. And Van Gogh is, as far as I can tell, not the same as the information I was sent about that 24 compute unit uh, Saison APU on 7 nanometer EUV. That, that, that's not what I think Van Gogh is. I think Van Gogh is kind of an in-between option. I, I think of it like a beefed up Renoir. Well, they know if Apple uses Van Gogh, and can you think of a better marketing term for Apple? Apple laptops with Van Gogh graphics for your college student. Can you think of a better name? I think it's for Apple, and I think they know Apple won't skimp on the DDR4 memory speeds. I'm sure 4200 megahertz DDR4, even 4000, will be enough for 16 compute units, which is what I can gather is in Van Gogh. So I think Van Gogh is literally just eight cores again with 16 compute units, and AMD will expect OEMs, if they choose it, to use the faster memory, and they'll also likely give it better I.O. AMD, again, saved costs, die space with Renoir by not giving it PCIe 4.0 and kind of skimping a little bit on how many SATA devices in USB you can have. I think Van Gogh could very realistically come, I don't know, let's say close to a PS4 Pro in performance. Again, just with eight cores, but that's definitely enough. And again, probably in 45 watt form factors, perfect for a MacBook. And then after that, I do think Van Gogh will be followed up by Cezanne at the very tail end of this year on seven nanometer EUV. And that should prove to be about as strong as an Xbox One X. And so, yeah, I'm really saying this is a trend, a trend that Renoir and then Tiger Lake are just kind of starting, where we get truly, truly capable of desktop experience and high-end desktop experience APUs in truly thin and light form factors. And trust me, Intel's working on follow-ups to Tiger Lake as well, and Intel should really be hoping that AMD does not get those Zen 3 APUs out on time, because if they do, well, that's when I do worry about if Intel can ever get really any mobile performance win until, well, I don't know, until after Golden Cove, because if they miss competing with Zen 3 for the majority of next year, which I think they will, well, then they'll be competing with Zen 4. But actually, let's do that. Let's talk about the delays a little bit. I am actually getting mixed information from my sources about when Zen 3 and other RDNA products will be able to roll out, although I was able to independently of WCCF Tech confirm similar information that AMD is at least attempting to get Zen 3 and Big Navi out around Thanksgiving or even Halloween. What do I make of this conflicting information about Zen 3 and RDNA 2 release dates? Well, I think right now AMD is behind the scenes operating as if nothing's going to delay their current roadmaps they've reported publicly. I think they're planning and working with supply chains to actually get Zen 3 out, you know, probably mid to late fall 
this year and RDNA 2 out around the same time. And then, of course, also the consoles that they absolutely want to help Sony and Microsoft get out on time. Sources I have closer to inside AMD are more optimistic about release dates, and the people farther away from within AMD seem to act like they're really unsure if anything's coming out this year. And again, that's because AMD understands that things are pretty fluid right now. Things are changing and there's a lot of unpredictability. So let's let's stop doubling down on release dates publicly, even to people that we have, you know, NDA meetings with, because we can't be sure these things are coming out. But at the same time, behind the scenes, they seem to think they will get things out on time. But the fact of the matter is it doesn't really matter if AMD thinks they can or can't. It's an unpredictable world right now, so we'll just have to see. But I guess my point is do not rule out these things coming out this year, but definitely don't bet your house on that or really on anything going as planned. But whether RDNA 2 and Zen 3 come out at the end of 2020 or the beginning or even middle of 2021, there's no doubt they will have a lot of problems, not just for Intel, but even more so for NVIDIA. And I do want to talk about NVIDIA's position quickly again. I don't really see how NVIDIA is competing with beefed up Tiger Lake and Van Gogh and Cezanne and Golden Cove APUs and laptops anymore. I mean, after all, their MX350 is an absolute joke. A 2 gigabyte neutered GTX 1050, 14 nanometer in 2020? I don't even know how that gets into the market. Well, except that I kind of do. Right now, I'm pretty sure NVIDIA is just giving them away. I think they're selling those MX350s that can't even beat Renoir's performance for about 20 bucks. And if you pair those with Intel's cheapest 14 nanometer mobile 6 core, the i7-10710U, well, as you know that I've covered in my Mike Bruzzoni podcast, that i7 is about 35 bucks. So I think that's what you're going to see. If AMD's selling cut down Renoir for, let's say, 80 bucks, which is probably about where they're selling it for, to go into a, a budget $600 laptop, I think you'll see NVIDIA and Intel pair up to give away these things almost for free, like a $55 MX350 plus i7 6 core combo. And that should compete with cut down Renoir despite using double the energy. But hey, you can put the i7 and dedicated NVIDIA graphics sticker on it, and so I think it will actually sell. But outside of the low-end market, which I think is perilous for them, I think that they're just going to also get way more aggressive because they can in the more powerful, dedicated laptop market. As you're already seeing marketing RTX 2060s next to Renoir APUs constantly right now, and NVIDIA has publicly... Confirmed, you can expect some much cheaper RTX 2000 series laptops this summer. I mean, I think you will see sub $1,000 laptops with either Intel or AMD 8-core CPUs and an RTX 2060. And it honestly wouldn't surprise me if RTX 2070 Super laptops started gravitating towards 1,000. And so outside of basically giving away their MX350 for free and making their dedicated, powerful Turing cards and laptops reasonably priced, at least reasonably priced compared to where they used to be, I think NVIDIA's other thing is they're definitely going to rush out a better MX450. I mean, I could be wrong. They could still try to use a neutered, you know, GTX 1650, which is what the MX450 is rumored to be. However, with half the bandwidth and 30% lower core clocks, I'm not sure how an MX450 could ever compete with Van Gogh when it can barely stay ahead of Renoir without being neutered. I just don't know how a 64-bit uh, GTX 1650 could compete at the end of this year with any of these APUs I'm talking about. I think they need to scramble to make a true next-gen 100 millimeter squared Ampere 8 nanometer graphics card, and I honestly think if they paired that with faster 4 gigabytes of GDR6, which it should be cheaper by the end of this year, hopefully, depending on how things go, of course, I honestly think a 100 millimeter squared 8 nanometer 4 gigabyte GDR6 Ampere MX450, or even if they call it MX550 card, could perform pretty close to an RX 584 gigabyte. But then again, think about that. I already think Van Gogh is going to be pretty close to a PS4 Pro in performance. So if it is, yeah. 
NVIDIA needs their dirt cheap $30 graphics cards, their MX series, to compete with an RX 580 at the end of this year if they want any chance in holding on to that cheap, dedicated graphics laptop market share. And I just don't think last, last gen APU performance will cut it at the end of 2020. But speaking of last gen APU performance, you know, let's say Picasso performance, where it's still decent desktop, even if you're not going to probably play all the latest AAA games, where are we going to see that performance go? Well, all you have to do is look to Lakefield. It has full Ice Lake 64 execution unit graphics, despite being clocked lower, this should get you something just below an MX150 and with five full cores. Yes, four of them are Atom cores, but these Atom cores are not as weak as what you remember from Intel's horrible Atom era. This should perform, in my opinion, pretty close to what you expected out of, say, quad-core i5s or even some of the weaker quad-core Picasso APUs and with graphics that should run some, some of the latest AAA games. This is what we expected out of non-thin laptops just four years ago, and that's base Xbox One performance. And now I do believe within a year we will see that in devices not much bigger than a smartphone. And that's again why I said Renoir is the start of a trend. Four years ago, what you got was something below entry console performance in a laptop that wasn't that thin. And now just a few years later in 2020, we're about to get APUs that get you lower resolution, but truly console performance but at 60 frames in truly thin and light laptops and not for that much money it's excellent high-end desktop user experience with reasonable gaming performance and so that's there and we're getting last gen performance in smartphone sizes now so where do i think we'll be in four years well I mean, by next year, with Van Gogh, Cezanne, and Golden Cove APUs, I think it's realistic to say if it's, you know, basically if Cezanne is an Xbox One X with a much better CPU, that's that's 1440p60 performance in cheap, thin laptops. And so, uh, yeah, I guess a few years from now, I think we'll be on to 4K performance. And by the end of this decade that we are now in, I do believe we will have 4K60 gaming in something not much bigger than a smartphone. We're certainly not going to be there next year or the year after, but before the end of this decade, it's going to be pretty incredible. This is how far we've come, people. We are almost to the future of true on-the-go AAA gaming in packages you can put in your pocket. And so, yeah, I know things seem pretty bleak out there right now, like we can't go anywhere, and so who cares? But trust me, what's going on in the world will pass. We will get through it, and once we do get through it, we'll be able to go back outside and bring our favorite latest AAA games with us. And so while it seems rough right now, I think there is a lot of optimism out there, and I love talking about it. And I will keep talking about it and all these great products through all of this bleakness because I think we got to go somewhere where we can just daydream for a little bit. Although, again, I do think these aren't just dreams. I think these will be reality sooner than you think. Subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this and others. Watch the Tiger Lake analysis video. You guys skipped Intel again. What the hell? And please remember to share my videos if you like them and ring the bell button. And, of course, if you like my content, Patreon supporters make this possible and they get exclusive content every week. All right. Thank you for watching. <laughs>